What would you say to someone who used to stream regularly but now struggles to push themselves back into it? Why are you struggling? This is a hard question to answer outright because we've got to get to the root of the struggle. Did you not like what you were streaming? Did you not like the content you were making? Did you not like the hours you were keeping? Did you not like your audience? In 2016, the audience that I built by around 2017, I did not like at all. Um, I was streaming a completely different style of games. I was presenting myself in a completely different manner. I was talking, I was drinking on streams all the time. I was talking about, like I was, I was a bitter little just got broken up with, like <laughs> playing FPS, angry, violent games and drunk. So I attracted a very toxic audience around me that didn't really support me. I created an audience that I did not like by the type of content content that I was creating and the type of personality that I was putting out there. That's actually why I took six months off of Switch. And when I came back, it, there, it wasn't like a rebrand or a reveal or anything. I just changed. I started streaming different things. I had also stopped drinking, started playing sandbox games instead of FPS games. Obviously the audience is going to change dramatically. I started dressing and presenting myself differently. Not dramatically, but just in, in, a, in, a, in a certain type of way. I changed a little bit of my presentation. I changed the types of things that I was willing to discuss. This is where I learned through experience that I didn't like putting my relationship as the topic or anything like that. Like I learned a lot about how that first run of streaming, how that first audience I built treated me and what I did not want to be treated like, what I did not want to make space for, what I did not want to tolerate. I learned a lot through that. So that, that to me wasn't quite a failure or anything. It was a huge learning experience. And so I've been able to put boundaries in my, in place better. I've switched the content style to back to games that I actually want to play. Cause a lot of the FPS and horror and adrenaline games like Dark Souls that I started playing was because chat asked me to, that audience asked me to and I kept saying yes to things that I didn't really want to but I thought would give me a lot of views okay that's that's what that was the exchange that's the Hollywood exchange that's the sell your soul to the devil exchange okay that question and that battle goes on the whole time you're doing content creation entertainment Hollywood whatever yes your content will reflect your audience your audience is a reflection of you so when people say that they're not responsible for their audience <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. To a certain degree, you can't control the individuals, but the general culture is created by you. You can reprimand the individuals and remove the individuals and denounce the individuals, but you cannot control individuals. You can cultivate a, a, a general vibe though. So anyway, back to, back to Brennan. Someone who used to stream regularly and struggles to push yourself back into it. Why did you stop? What was it that pushed you away? Identify that. Here's the thing, I'm not sure. It's this mental block I put up. I think you're sure. I th no, I don't think you're sure, but I think that there's an answer. I think that you don't know the answer. I don't know that you've analyzed enough. I know that you have been recently going through um, a rebrand. So changing your username, changing the color palette. I think that maybe you're in a moment of finding your identity. And I think this is something that a lot of content creators probably go through. Sort of finding your identity, defining your identity, and then representing that identity. I think that's kind of what you're going through a little bit. The only thing I could say for you is just do something. Um, I, I don't know if this is gonna be like a little harsh, but just do something. Like I don't mean in real life, but just put a video up. Just just stream, whatever you wanna stream. I think I think that something that, that you personally ran into, and maybe some people in chat can relate to this, but I think that you were trying to to do the streamer thing. I think that you were, you were oh, I've got to have this overlay with my webcam in the corner and react to this game. And uh, I think you were trying to follow the formula. And I think that the formula is not what you need to be doing. Some people I think need to start with the formula. This is the Hierophant card in tarot, if y'all are familiar with that stuff. I think that, that some people need to follow the beaten path, the tried and true, the road more traveled. Um, I think that, that that is a good way to get started for some people. And that's certainly what I did. I, I followed the, the, the normal streaming thing. And then at a certain point, you've got to break off not always, but I think there's a handful of people that need to do take the road less traveled, like walk through, like literally walk through the, the, the wild forest, do something that's never been done before and break, break the path, break down the trees, bring your machete and chop everything down and make a new path. That's something really, really cool and innovative. That is just what you're feeling. It's not because you're trying to do something innovative. It's just because it's what you want to do. So you going like Brennan, I know that you were recording like vlogs of you walking through nature and in the woods. I think that's your off the beaten path. I think that's more what your heart is being called to make. And I don't think that you really enjoy sitting at your computer all day. I know I certainly don't. 
I know that I'm definitely being called to get away from my computer a little bit lately, but I've been ignoring it because I feel trapped. I feel stuck in this routine that I've set up with all of the editing, all of the streaming. So if I don't listen to that soon, I'm going to burn out because I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring my, my, my call, right? My, my, my little intuition coming in and telling me to change. How do you stay positive when you average one viewer? I've tried turning off the number so I can't see it, but I feel, I can feel the lack of presence. Bilal, I think you're gonna need to change your focus when you're streaming. I do look at my viewer count. Look, I give that advice. I say, don't look at, don't, but I only say that tentatively. I say that if you're struggling with it, if it's hurting your self-esteem and hurting your ability to create and stream, I look at it. I have it on. I'm an analytically driven person. I like to see the number. I like to understand. Sometimes it does mess with my head and it will make, I will, I will get down on myself, especially if I see the number drop dramatically. I would be like, oh no, like, oh, I'm, I'm boring. Every, like I'm failing. Like it does mess with my head. So I don't recommend people do it, but I know that I am analytically driven and I and I am also obsessive uh, about that type of thing so I know that if I don't see it I'll, I'll kind of like it'll it'll distract me in a different way so I I think that this is a learn yourself kind of thing as well but I would recommend you you could keep the viewer count on if you want to or not know what know what works better for you and your your mental patterns going on there but I would recommend switching your focus in the way that it's Stop thinking about live streaming as far as the audience that's there and everyone watching me right now and think about it as a live recording of content elsewhere. I know I give I know I'm probably a broken record on this, but literally it's a game changer, okay? It helps me a lot when I was recording when I was streaming 12 minutes. It's a game that takes about six hours to beat, and my chat went a little dead at a couple of parts in it. Because it's it's kind of it's an annoying game to play because it's like Groundhog's Day. You're stuck on loop and you keep repeating the same day over and over and over again until you get the right order of doing things and unlock like the secret answers. And so you literally just repeat the same 12 minutes, the same 12 12 minutes the same 12 minutes and it gets a little frustrating to play it but it's also very rewarding when you get something to unlock but I can imagine that it was also a little frustrating and boring in certain ways to watch and my chat got a little dead so I I noticed that I noticed that my chat wasn't active I noticed that it wasn't very entertaining for those types of reasons until we got to that moment where it's like finally Finally, we found out this thing. Finally, we've gotten a little bit further. Like what I started thinking about was, okay, this is gonna be a YouTube video. I'm going to download this VOD. I'm gonna edit out all this boring part, these boring parts, and I'm going to edit together a 20 minute playthrough of this and show just the best moments. So I started thinking about, thinking about that while I'm live streaming 12 minutes with a chat that is not very active, I start amping. I'm like, okay, wait a second. This is gonna be a YouTube video. Let me amp everything up. Let me, let me react react louder, react harder, uh, and still authentically. I don't, I'm not, I don't want you to fake. I don't want you to, to pretend, but just bring it out a little bit more, project a little bit more, express a little bit more. And then I know that I'm going to have good stuff to go on the YouTube later, go on the YouTube video later. So I think Bilal, if you, if you shift and you're, you're, tr you're putting that content on other platforms besides Twitch, you can focus on making it the best recording possible for later editing or pulling out a, t a TikTok clip or a, twi a Twitter clip, a clip to put on your Twitter or whatever. And I think that you will be a lot happier during the streams. Also make sure that you're not streaming too many hours. So pull it back to two or three hour streams. Make sure that you're not playing in oversaturated games. I didn't think I was shy until I was about to press start streaming and I had a massive anxiety attack. Uh, this happens to me when I take a break for a long time. I get butterflies, I get nervous, I get stressed out, I get sweaty, I get uh, anxious. I think that that anxiety, maybe not your massive anxiety attack, I'm not talking, I'm, I don't I don't know what this this exactly entailed for you but when I get nervous when I get butterflies when I get anxious and I'm like sweaty and I'm like oh, gulp I think that that's excited like that's excitement that's stage fright that's like oh I'm about to go on like it's to me it, it amps me up a little bit more and five minutes in it's it starts to subside and if it doesn't then you might need to address it and maybe maybe it's not a good night for you to stream but once you actually get past that point and you're like you just do it, it's not that like the thing for me is i think a lot of people psych themselves out about streaming and they just won't do it jackaroo loves you i'm looking at you <laughs> um they they psych themselves out about it and so they'll just sit there and they'll think about doing it and they will allow themselves to i don't know how else to say it besides psych yourself out you will just build it up in your head into something way bigger 
deeper than what it is and you will it's not it's just it's not that deep like it's really not i don't know even even like youtube streaming i was really stressed the first time but i just kind of like dove in like head first asking your friends to be your first viewers if you have the ability to do that and if not like i said before start to try to find streamer communities to connect with 